to do later. So the uh, purpose of this uh, project today is also still gathering data. G the enumeration we are going to uh, do a list of a, a bunch of activities actually, but uh, the main purpose is to uh, to enumerate a resource, searching for uh, vulnerabilities or to understand uh, a behavior of a process or things like that. Uh, data gathering, enumeration, and so on. So the tools we are going to refer to is the Windows 10 as an operating system. We are going to use some of the utilities from Microsoft only, and we are going to measure the the the, the feasibility and their security actually in our framework. So we are going to use them from Microsoft since they are trusted. And even though, at the end, we'll be able to measure the security level, even though they are from Microsoft. But this behavior is to push you, uh, recognize that you are able to, after actually downloading a resource, whatever it is, you'll have the skills how to measure its security level. We'll use that today on Microsoft's products but you can do it on, on anything actually download from a public network. Let's tackle that. I want to share a, a second view, which is a second window on which there is my, uh, my uh, machine. Let me just type my password. Wait, it is on. That's a great. So here I'm inside my machine. I'm going to launch it. Wait, I'm inside of my machine now. Don't save. I don't need this thing. Yes, great. So uh, inside this machine, I'm going to start my virtual machine, my uh, virtual machine, my workspace. Yes, the one that's done, the one we need. Right, it might be later, no updates, usually we do not need any updates. Play it, no updates again. Just give it a few seconds. I'll swap to full screen mode. Yes, here we are. This is my desktop. Okay, it's uh, having a black background, whatever. So, uh, as per the guide request, we are going to explore the running processes in our computer and we are going to see the type and the model and the aspect and the status and so on. Uh, so, to do so, we are going to uh, explore normally uh, the available processes and then after we're going to study that to see if they are, uh, um, let's say, showing uh, a normal status, normal behavior, and we'll, uh, we'll tackle that. Uh, okay, just the uh, first thing I actually need to do and to answer such a uh, request. I might think about the CMD. Uh, as a command, I can ask for the task list. Command, task list. Yes, it will give me actually the result of the uh, run and the processes. Uh, all of them, they actually listed here, and what uh, is the most important is the process ID, and you can find it here. So the process name is available on the left side. Uh, so I have nothing actually to tackle here. It's not the the best window through which I can uh, I can analyze the uh, processes. But let me keep it apart. Let me keep it apart. Okay, and I'm going to run the uh, task manager from here from the task bar. I'm going to run the task manager. Task manager, here it is. And I'm going to uh, swap to more details and I'm going to wait for him to display. Yes, here it is. Here it is. 
uh, what we are able to see here is the list of, let me maximize the view also. Okay. What we can see is the list of the run and the process, but classified into groups. Apps, we have two applications. One of them is the command prompt, the one we run here, the one we run here. It is mentioned as an application, that's great. So it is mentioned as an application, we leave it there. And we have one very uh, interesting category, which is the background processes. It shows 28 run in the process we are not able to see in to, we are not able to see here in the list of the applications. They are in background. The processor is running, is executing, is um, handling, yet they are not visible to us. Uh, interesting uh, um, description. Yeah, they are not visible to the end user. As technical people now, you are able to understand that there are running process which are actually hidden. But for um, normal users, this is not recognized. Here we can guess that there are malware utilizing this category to act, to act as a hidden process. Simply like that. Simply like that. As per the uh, task number one, we are required, as per the task number one, we are uh, required to move this command prompt from the running applications into a running background process. Task number one refer to the question we were uh, seeing now. It is asking us to change the property and the status of this command prompt from an application group to be a one and, uh, process and background. To do so, the command I'm going to do it. See now it is here in this group, in the group of the applications. Let's execute the following command. We are going to change it into a run and process and background. But how to do that? I'm going to call the PowerShell. Sorry. PowerShell, yes, the PowerShell. And uh, this PowerShell, actually, I'm going to specify um, the properties that it is a window to be uh, executed uh, uh, as uh, to be executed hidden way. So I'm going to say uh, it is a window. I'm going to, what is my window? I'm going to say it is a window. And I'm going to say that it is going to be hidden. And then after, I'm going to say that uh, it would actually. Um, specify a directory which is the C drive, let's say, or whatever, because we are inside the C drive, saying like that. And and uh, if there is any content in this, uh, in this actually uh, related to this um, application, I'm going to just make the thing actually be called in a recursive mode. Just I'm going to press enter. He said, uh, I have a problem. Yeah, it's typo. I have a problem in typo. It's PowerShell. Power. I forgot the R. Power. Oh, yes. Enter. Okay, it has been disappeared. You see what happened? It has been disappeared. It is not there. But, but if I can go and explore, let me sort. Let me sort the um, the display of this task manager by name. And here it is. Here it is. In which group? In the background processes. It is still here, but in the background processes. So. So, this is a way we can, <coughs> sorry, can uh, push a process to be running but in a hidden way. So, if we are having the command prompt running in the background and in a hidden way, this is a disastrous, uh, let's say, process. Actually, in our case, now we are doing the thing actually manually because um, we, intentionally for learning purposes we are doing that. But uh, remember, it is not the uh, normal situation where we find the uh, command prompt running. So uh, in, a, in a background state here, a hidden way, it's not the normal behavior. It's not the normal behavior, completely it's not. Um, uh, actually, uh, the second part of this task number one is asking us to search for an alternative. Actually here, immediately if I open, first of all, before I pass, if we find the command prompt run in the background process, as a background process, so we have to suspect it immediately, we have to end the task. Immediately we have to end the task. Why? Because it is a malware 100%. If it is uh, um, by itself running in background, so it is a malware uh, resource. It is a malware resource. So I have to terminate that immediately with, with, with no doubt. Is that clear, please? Is that clear, please, everybody? 
yes, yes, yes mister great so the second part of this task number one is asking us to search for an alternative to hide processes to hide processes to hide the process search for an, an, an alternative why because hiding a process within the background the process is not the most common behavior of my of malware it is not the common behavior malware do malware in plural so he's asking us to go for an alternative uh, the alternative i'm going to just show it to you in a very um, uh, fast way it is the injection we saw that in the we saw that actually in the uh, digital course we are going to do it in uh, in a very fast uh, pace uh, just to prove that we can hide the process also but def def in a different way and this is the most uh, let's say vast and uh, spread and distributed methodology that malware uh, referred to the injection Wait, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, open my documents folder. Well, let me, uh, let me use the C drive or let me use the desktop. Any, the desktop, okay. I'm going to generate a new text file. Text image. I'm going to say here my, uh, my actually um, gift. I'm going to say virus. Virus.js. Oh, Actually, the extension is not uh, because it is shown it's text document. I'm going to change the extension. See here, it's te text document. So I'm going to go to view, options, view again, view tab, show hidden files, and here the extension. I'm going to untick it. I'm going to untick the hidden or uh, hide extensions. Okay, you're fine. Okay. See the extension.txt. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to keep only the .js. Enter. Yes, I'm going to confirm that I'm going to change the extension. Done. See, the icon has been changed. The shape of the icon has been changed. That's great. That's great. Let me maximize the resolution of this presentation. Yes, that's great. It is 720. Okay, so we have one file that um, I'm going to use as a virus. I'm going to use this file as a virus. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, edit this uh, file. I'm going to edit this file using the notepad. Yes, virus.js. Uh, for now, the size is zero kilobits. For now, the size is zero kilobits. I'm going to open my browser. I'm going to open my browser and search for a script in JavaScript that, for example, um, whatever it does, any effect. JS, I'm going to say whatever JS. Hide text field effect sample. Okay, I'm going to say this one and i'm going to copy this script here i'm going to copy this script here or whatever this is actually yeah i'm going to copy this script even with the com even with the comments whatever so great i'm going to copy come back to my file paste it remember my file size is zero i'm going to save it now One kilobyte now, one kilobyte. The size is one kilobyte. Great. So I'm going to close everything now. I'm going to close this file only, this virus. I'm going to close this uh, browser. No, I'm going to open the Bing.com. Bing.com. And I'm going to do download the image in background here, Bing.com. I'm going to download an image, an image. I need an, a, 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 any image, actually. Uh, okay. What are they? What are they? What are they? I have to inspect it, whatever. Let me use the images they have. BG. Okay, I'm gonna use this one. Right click, save image as. I'm gonna save it in desktop along with that uh, uh, file, so save. Close all now. Yes, I have the image here, here it is. Double click it to, to visualize it. Not showing anything. What happened? Come on. Yes, here it is. This is our image. Yes, great. So we have an image, size seven kilobytes, and a virus size one kilobyte. 
what we are going to do, we're going to hide the process that uh, this device can do inside of this image. And this way, we will be able to hide effectively a process using an injection. So, I'm going to run the command prompt from here, from this window. Right, press the shift keyboard and right click. I'm, uh, let me just copy the path of this uh, image. Right click, shift and, uh, and right click, copy as uh, path. Here it is, copy as path from here. Yes. Then I'm going to open the CMD. And I'm going to move to that path. CD space, paste. What I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the image name. I'm going to keep only the path of the folder. OK, enter. Now I am inside the folder. DIR. I have the name of the virus. Here it is. And the name, the name of the image here it is I have both of them I'm gonna inject the virus inside of this image so copy the same command I'm actually we use actually the same uh, the same uh, injection process we did in the digital security course but you have to uh, let's do it copy I'm gonna copy what into I'm gonna copy into the OI P the same image name dot JPG come on But the, but the PG. And two of this image, I'm going to copy the virus, so plus the virus name, virus name, dot js, dot js, the same extension, then space, the name of the resultant file, the uh, the harmful file, the, vi the file with the virus. I'm going to say the new PG dot the same extension of the original file, the same extension, so dot jpg, jpg. The same extension. Before I press enter to confirm to confirm that, see here what we have. We have only one uh, image, one uh, virus, and one uh, old file. So I'm going to press. I'm going to confirm that. One file copied, and here it appeared. New BG, the new BG name. Here it is. Here it appeared here. The size is two kilobytes. The size is good, two kilobytes. It will not run. Why? Because the original image is seven kilobytes. This is only two, so it will not run. Uh, I'm sure. Double click. It is given error. We can't open this file. Why? Because. Why? Because the system has recognized that this is an image and this is a JS file. They are not uh, compatible, so he did not do. He did not accomplish the task. What we have to do? We have to do it blindly. We'll make the system just blindly inject the content of the second file, which is the virus.js into the original file which is the oip.jpg how to do that blindly so before the name of the image i'm going to add forward slash b blind see what i added I added forward slash b this one here now i'm going to i'm going to change the name of the image also new bg2 name sorry i'm going to change it to two here yes two yes now see press enter Again, one file copied, and the new file has been appeared. But how much is the size? Eight kilobytes. Eight. How I, how, um, this is very fine. What is this eight? It is this seven plus this one. Eight kilobytes. Means it has been injected. Let me double click it. Very fine. We have our original image. Looks like original. Looks like it is not the original, this one. But this is harmful. I'm going to open this image using the notepad. I'm going to open, I'm going to export the content using this notepad. So I'm going to do open with this image, this new one, open with. I'm going to choose another application, which is I need the, the notepad. Uh, more apps. Yes, this is the notepad. Uh, I'm going to say OK. OK. Okay, I have things actually which I cannot understand. We saw in the, uh, this is the metadata, and you know that. I'm going to go further, 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 further. What is this? This is our file injected. This is our JS source injected already. So, originally, we see an image when you double click. It's an image. But when we explore the content, no, it holds something different. It has the metadata of the, the, metadata of the original image in addition to 
metadata in addition to metadata in addition to our vice.js content. Uh, the content actually is simple JS. It's not advice, but it's a simple. Uh, this is actually another way via which we can hide the processes. This is another way via which we can hide uh, processes. Uh, again, uh, any questions, please, before we move to the next task? No, Mr. So that's great. That's great. Let me just okay. show you again the display you the uh, the guide for the second task, the task number two. Here it is, task number two. We are going to explore uh, the data gathering information. Now, actually, what we did in task number one is to uh, try to understand the uh, running process in our environment to recognize uh, what is defined, what is not defined, what is actually uh, doughty as uh, what is a process that uh, runs as a doughty process what is the and uh, we knew how to analyze that no more no less let's uh, move one step further and let's uh, dig in uh, the data gathering uh, using specified tools for data gathering uh, what we are going to do what we are going to do is to explore different commands they are windows based we may find them actually in different platform, but, um, platforms but they are actually windows based commands We'll dig them one by one to explore uh, whatever we can and to extract whatever we can as uh, juicy data. Command number one is the NS lookup, the name server lookup. We know actually uh, this is not new for us as a digital security students, uh, but let's uh, let's uh, do them again because you have to have them clearly in your head. We see a list, but I'll show you how to explore the help and the assistance for each. If I give you a new command, if I give you a new command. You have to be able to understand the syntax and how to use it. Let's dig in. Let's come back to our guide. Sorry, to our work machine. Let's come back to our work machine. And let's go on. So I'm going to close all and then I'm going to start uh, a new tools from scratch. So for the NS lookup, for the NS lookup, name server lookup. Actually, it is a command that runs on online. It's uh, it's um, it's um, command line interface. Actually, a tool or a command line function that runs on the CLI uh, command line interface, the CMD. So I'm gonna call the CMD, and I'm gonna do. I call the CMD as a normal user. Command prompt. Here, I call the CMD as a normal user. So who am I? I made a mistake. It's without slash. It's uh, his same Murat as uh, the user in this uh, environment here. That's great. So I'm going to call the NS lookup. So NS lookup. Yes, great. Uh, yes, it returned to me the uh, direct server I'm connected to in addition to its address. He said a no. He does not know who am I. Uh, sorry, he does not know which server exactly. Or oh, the server is not configured well since he is getting me an address. Great. This is a proven task. This is a proven task to explore the address of the connected device. The here service provider, the device service provider, the connected device in my uh, external environment. We are not allowed to do that unless we have the permission. This is a concern you have to know. Actually, I'm gonna uh, let's go all of us uh, for this uh, domain, which is actually mine. We are going to uh, explore. It's features, it's uh, options, and so on. We have the right to do that. It's mine. So we have the right to do that. Favabay.com, favabay.com. Yes, like that. Press center, yes. It's a non-authoritative, uh, authoritative, uh, actually, uh, property. Its address is the following. So great. So we are able to extract at least the address of this uh, domain. We know where it is. I'm going to open this uh, Fava Bay. I'm going to open this Fava Bay. So I'm going to open this Fava Bay for you. Sorry. Dot com. Yes, it, it runs very fine. This is the Fava Bay dot com. Uh, as per the guide, actually, we were given, let me, I'm just exploring the content. No more or less, it runs very fine. 
uh, as per the guide just for your uh, for your reference only as per the guide of this uh, uh, practice today we are given a different interface for the summary of this practice slash app where we will find the content of this uh, actually the recorded content of this lab today Yes, you can refer to here, you can refer to here to find this video, it explains a little bit, but it's for you only. But uh, our main interface for use is the formabay.com for today. So it works very fine, we said. Come back. The address of this formabay.com is this one, 66.96. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy it. Edit. Copy. Copy. I'm going to try to open this address, since this is the address. So this formabay is available here. I'm going to explore that address. I'm going to try to open that file bay from that address. Enter. Enter. He told me forbidden. What does it mean forbidden? Is it an error? No, it's not an error. It's just an access control. It's an access control. You know what is the access control? You saw that in unit number seven, digital security. We are not allowed to access that this way. We are not allowed to access here this way, 403. We are not allowed to do that. Why? Because it's forbidden for us. We are not allowed. It is not an error. I'm going to close again and open it in the same place here. Here, here, here. Yes, here. Forbidden. Still, it's not opening. So for sure, it will not run with us. So it is asking us to uh, to follow the regular path, which is type in www.fabbay.com. Very good, very good. So this way, we can conclude that we have actually an outcome that this Faber Bay is secured from this access point. So to access the resources of this Faber Bay, pictures and texts and whatever he, uh, we have as advertisements, this way using the address, no, we are not allowed to do, forbidden. We will be blocked. We will be expelled from here. This Faber Bay is secured against the access through the address. That's a great. Let's try to do that against any social media application. I'm going to try, for example, the facebook.com. Facebook.com, okay. We have the address. Here it is. We got it. Now we know the address of this Facebook. Here it is, 157.240, and so on. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy for the Facebook. This is the address. And we'll see if this Facebook is secured against such access point or not. Copy. I'm going to open a new tab. Paste, enter. What is this? It opened. So using the address, we are able to tackle the direct domain. Actually, it from the understandings, from the, the conclusions of the behavior we are doing, we are able to see that this Facebook is not secured against such access point. It is not a damage, but it is giving us an access this way. It is giving us an access. While this one does not give us an access, clearly it is forbidden that. For a privacy purpose. purpose. So any application we can extract its address at least this way, and we can explore if it is successfully secured against the access or not, through the address. And let's pass to the next command. Actually, one of the notices also, sorry, before I move, when I moved, when I accessed the NSO cap, the access point C is a simple greater than. There is no drive than the, the, the path. No, it's a simple greater than. Greater than. And here's greater than. So we are inside the NS lookup. I'm going to exit to come back to the next. If I type who am I, who am I? the first command, like the first command we typed it earlier, who am I here, which will not give me a result. See, I'm going to press enter. Unknown, he said unknown. It's not giving me who am I. It's giving something actually different. So I'm going to exit from here. Yes, I'm back to the C drive. Now I'm going to type who am I again. Uh, typo. Who am I? I said who am I? Yes, Murad. That's great. So it gives me the result. Great. So next, uh, next actually data we are going to tackle is the next data we are going to tackle as per this guide is the SecPol, the security policy. Secpol command, as per our guide. I'm going to type secpol, pol, secpol, typo, sec. Wait, enter. A little bit of time, and here we are. 
here we are. Here's the window of the security policy, the local security policy. Through, through this actually security policy, we are able to enlist all the policies imposed on top of this machine. All the policies imposed on top of this machine. What does it mean? The politics that they make this machine run and use services on the network, on the environment where it works or where it runs, they are set here, they are drawn here. That's good. What should we do? Nothing. Here, actually, there is a problem. There is a problematic view if you explore, if you display this one. It has not to be displayed to you. See, I'm going to move to the normal, normal computer, not in the visual machine. And then here, I'm going to type the CMD and try to call the sec pod. Here's CMD. And I'm going to type the, call the sec pod, normal computer. No, access denied. Access denied. This is the normal behavior. This is the normal behavior. Close and then it will open me another window, which is not giving me any access. See, nothing. It's empty, completely empty. So I come back to my virtual machine, full screen mode, displaying those politics, those policies. This is a problematic. I'll go further than that. I'll explore this local policies hive, double click. We have the security options. And from here, I'm going to search for a certain policy to show you one hint. See this. Um, Interactive logon, number of previous logons. We have a 10 actually uh, set as per this number of uh, interactive logons. What is this? This is actually the number of the user's credentials saved uh, in the history. The last 10 logons, they are being saved. What, are, what, are, what does it mean? It means the usernames and the passwords of the 10 logged in candidates, they have been saved in this computer. Are you serious? Yes, I am means we can extract, if you open this computer, I will get your password, this is for sure. How? I'll just guide you to the path, but we'll not do that for a reason or another. Uh, we have actually 10, but this is not the maximum number. We can adjust this policy now since, uh, since I opened that up to 50, 50. The maximum is 50. I'm going to explore that. See, 45, 6, 7, 49, 50. The next number is 0. Yes, so the maximum is 50. 50 credentials we can save per... Uh, per total. I'm going to leave it 10 for now. I'll leave it 10 for now. To, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, see where they are stored and explore them, I'm going to call the next command. I'll keep this one apart. I'll keep this one apart. And I'm going to call the next command to see where those passwords are, those usernames and passwords are. The next command is reg edit. Just recall. Here, access control. I'm going to say yes, confirm yes, I need it to open. Here it is, this is my registry. And from the local machine, from the local machine, I'm going to call the local machine and then after the security hive, here it is. All of the hives inside the local machine, they have an expand arrow, expand arrow. Security, no, does not have. Security, no, does not have. The security here does not have. Why does it? Is it because it's empty? No, it is not because it's empty, but because it is sensitive to be utilized by normal users. Remember, who am I here? I'm Murad. I'm a normal user. I do not have the right to do that. So what should I do? What should I do? I have to raise my security to be an administrator. I'll close this registry and I'm going to run the CMD as an administrator. So CMD. CMD. No, no, no. I say not this way. I'm going to run as administrator, as admin, CMD. So I put that, right click, run as admin. Yes, permission, I'm going to say. So here, I'm as administrator, here, administrator, see here. And here I was as normal user in the command prompt. I'm going to type who am I again. Here you tell me that I'm all right, but as uh, administrator, here, as administrator. I'm going to call the reg edit again. What was it? Okay, the CMB, the registry has been opened. Still the security hive, I cannot open. Still double click, does not open, does not go at all. Open, double click, double click, no, no result. What does it mean? It means even this administrator is not allowed, it's not allowed, it's not allowed to do so. To do so what? To open the security hive in the registry. What I should do? 
From the digital security course, we know that the users in a computer, they are three. They are classified into three types of users. Can you remind me what are they, please? What are the, the, user, the users in a computer? What are the types of the users in a computer? Can you remind me, please? Users are... Number one. What is it? User. Number two, who? Administrator. Administrator. Okay. Number three, who, who is it? Number three, who is it? The number, the, the third user. Now, as the user, we were not able to open the security hive. And as administrator, also, we were not able to open the security hive. The third user, who is it? This is the last chance for us to open the security hive. Benat, are you with me? Yes, Mr. Yes, who is the user? Can you just remind me about that? It's the system. The system is itself. Use are the system. The system behavior. So the system would act here to help us open the system hive. The uh, security hive, sorry. As administrator, as administrator, I'm going to run the session as a system. See here, I'm going to type again, who am I? I'm Murad. I'm going to type the following command now. Sys, uh, sorry, PS exec, it's another command that it is from Microsoft only, but I'm going to run it as a system and as interactive, uh, it would open me an application uh, with interactive uh, capabilities. And now, do it now. On what? On the CMD prompt. Enter. He, he said to me that it is not recognized. He told me it is not recognized, this thing here. This PS exec, process executor, it is not recognized. No, it is recognized, actually, but it is not available in, inside the system. We have to call it. Already I downloaded this, actually, this, uh, this tool. Here it is. This is the thing here. Here it is. I'm going to copy the path, right click. I'll, I'll show you later from where I downloaded this one. So I'm going to copy it as path. And I'm going to move the CD space, paste. I'm going to delete the name of this uh, tool. I keep only the path. Enter. It, it is there. I'm going to type the same command again. This same command again. Here it is. Now I'm going to press enter. Yes. It opened me another window, a third one. I'm going to type, who am I? I am a system. I'm going to call the reg edit. Reg edit. It opened me the reg edit. And security hive, it opens. I can open the security hive now. Successful, bingo. The cache, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. They are ten credentials. They are the ten users and the, the values. They are here. The data, the data here it is. Means the password and username. They are somewhere here. We can extract them here from from this area here from this block. I close this one. Just uh, we finished, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just show you, just to remind you, because this is you know we saw this in the computer security course, but I'm gonna remind you from where we get this tool. It is from Microsoft only, so I'm going to refer to the Google. I'm going to type uh, PS exec, um, sys live, Microsoft, Microsoft. So I type PS exec, sys live, this is the one from Microsoft. This is the, uh, the link. I'm going to open it, download it from here. That's it. That's it. Uh, so I'm going to stop the recording here and I'm going to give you the video for your uh, action. And uh, I need your uh, outcome just uh, right after. Just I'll be with you now. Just I'll keep uh, going with you now just for uh, if you have.